hey, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the man who built this palace, Mark who Duchesne. Built the, yeah. Mark Duchesne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice meeting you, Mark. Pleasure. Nice meeting you. Welcome to Nicola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably give the tour better than I can. Right uh, no, I don't think so. No, actually, uh, I might be able to say things like, I like the build, but that'd be about it. Well, there you go. if you like the build, that's... I'm done now. I can go. Hey, good, good. No, I, uh, I am impressed. I, I was expecting a normal uh, Alpha product, and it's I don't not know, an it Alpha product, like, that's for sure. Well, it's uh, it's pretty damn good. In fact, for, even our Alpha products don't look like Alpha products, based on what I've seen before. So this this looks pretty nice. This looks really nice. We've so, got a ways to go, but it's 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 coming along. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure so these guys explain these are the first four pre-series trucks off the line. Mm -hmm. um, we got a little bit extra work to do to them, but every every one that we build off the line is coming a little bit better so far. Yeah, so, so. when I saw the truck outside, that one was Alpha, right? Yes. 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 Okay, well, that truck looks every bit as good as... Well, actually, the one thing that looks different is the doors fit nicer on this than the one that was outside. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I didn't want to say anything. Because you're quite a bit bigger than I am, and I don't feel like running like cowboy boots. You got you got running uh, shoes on. Yeah, I'm good. So yeah, I, I want to uh, salt you. Yeah, it's uh, I came out of the car industry, and the fit and finish is a little where, bit different. Where are you from? I started in Toyota. Um, I spent the early days at Tesla. Yeah. We won't talk about fit and finish then. Uh, you can, but uh, I'll, I'll be as honest with you as I'm, I was with Elon. I know you were. <laughs> I know you were. <laughs> yeah, um, but they've come a long way. They've come a long ways, yeah. a long, long ways. Yeah, well, from where we started. This I, says, uh, I know, can tell you, just looking at that, if that's an alpha, or sorry, a beta build or pre-production build, I don't need to have a gap gauge. I can, I can see, and um, flushness and whatnot. I was checking as I was walking by. Yeah, you got a pretty good build. Yeah, uh, trucks for, are. Trucks are a little bit bigger and not as not as critical on the rest, but, but these are pretty good. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. You talk to a guy who's buying one of these trucks. If it's not a fleet owner, yeah. talk to those guys, and you, you get care. a totally uh, different. Absolutely. They'll they'll go over with a fine tooth comb, Absolutely. and they come up with their own gap gauges. Yep. So uh, I suspect that that's going to be part of your uh, fleet. It's not just going. To, sorry, that'll be part of your sales, not just the fleet guys, but also. The independent truckers. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. If you don't appeal to them, you're not going to appeal to the fleets either. Well, that's that's the most reason. of the fleets are truck drivers that yeah. went and started companies. Exactly, exactly right. Yeah. Oops. So that's you want to uh, take a walk uh, down the line and see yeah. how we sure. Let's, uh, let's yeah. have a let's sure have we a can look. do that. Yeah. What we're in is is the first half phase of our three-phase plan. So on the other side of that wall, we're still doing construction Yeah. Um, on the next part of the building. Yeah. So everything that we have right here in the final version of our factory, this is all warehouse. Um, yeah. All of this is designed, it's all modular, it just unbolts. We yeah. don't have a conveyor, we use automatic guided vehicles. I was gonna, I can hear them, but I can't see them. Yeah, you'll see them when we get around. Um, and we did that because we know we're going to grow. So basically our plan as we grow, we unbolt the yeah. parts, we put them, we wheel them through the wall, we drive the AGVs over and, you know, over a Christmas shutdown, we can, right. we can move, get back up and start running again. Right. Yeah. And then as we grow, this warehouse area that you see here starts to fill in all of this space. Yeah. So basically what we're looking at is shipping and receiving over this here. This is all shipping or and receiving. just receiving. receiving. So we bring, we don't do much shipping out of here, of yeah. course, out of the trucks that comes out of the marshalling yard. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's pretty traditional, right? We, yeah. we bring the parts in, we decant everything into our own containers. We go into our small parts warehouse. Big stuff like batteries and that that you saw, they'll go direct to the truck. We don't actually store them in here. Yeah. Um, and then the parts either go into our sub-assembly area or they go right direct to the line. Well, let's go over and see the sub-assembly area. So the sub-assembly right now, because this is the very beginning of the pre-series, our volume is so low, we're not actually doing all of our sub-assemblies here. Some of them we do line side. But you can see here we're doing an air tank assembly right now. And now you see where those carts come in. Mm. So 
So how vertical are you going to go? Are you going to try and do the Tesla thing and make your own seats eventually? Or are you uh, going to be using the supply base? Or what do oh, you I think, uh, I, think, I think we're better situated to be an integrator of parts, just like all the big OEMs. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think our, you know, the parts that we want to be heavily involved in are the parts that are important to us, the fuel cells, the batteries, yeah. Yeah. The axles, the software. Yeah. Um, well, your economies of scale are, are really different on commercial vehicles, right? Yeah. So, and that, that's one of the challenges the industry has right now with new technology is, you know, there's only about 250 to 300,000 heavy duty trucks sold a year in the U.S. You know, compare that to tens of millions. You know, so you're you're, yeah. you're at a you're at you got a you got a higher threshold for bringing in new technology, verticalizing, so the industry, you know, it's very typical in the commercial vehicle industry to, to outsource a lot of that. But like Mark said, you know, we got to pick our spots intelligently where where there's not only a business case, but a technology case for it too. Yeah. And you know, it's a different market now. When I was at Tesla, we couldn't get suppliers to even talk to us. Yeah, I know. Now, all the suppliers want to be able to, to work with new companies because Right. There's a lot of it, and they've seen how well that could go. So, well, you know, you're not challenged anymore to find somebody who can provide you an electric motor. There's lots of people yeah. that can do electric motors, yeah. and they're really good at it. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that's who I want to compete with. Well, the, the, uh, at the end of the day, what's going on with most suppliers that I've talked to, like Tier 1s, they're getting a little tired of the, uh, you know, 60 days post or or 90 days before you get your money and want to basically all it says is that hey you know what maybe these guys haven't got enough money to pay us and uh having three months in arrears and whatnot maybe good for uh, the guys here but in europe you can't get away with that it's exactly. 30 days and that's it and they know why so uh, it may well, you gotta do everything you gotta do everything in a partnership right you can't yeah. push financial stuff <laughs> on but um well, that ain't but, gonna happen for a uh, that's as far as I'm concerned. The reason that people want to work with um, uh, guys like yourself or the newer companies is because they see uh, they see a, a clear path to financial future. So anyhow, Absolutely. let's uh, let's let's go and have a look at what's going on here. Looks like wire bundles. Yeah. So we you know we start with the with the basic frame at the beginning of yeah. the process. Um, and we basically build from the inside out, upside down. Right, yeah. And we flip it over and we do the same thing again, inside out, right side up. Yeah. Um, and most of that is so that we can get access because it's a big, you know, yeah. big component. Right. Um, we try to get the access. You'll see by the time we get to the end, we we fill up a lot of that space up in the middle. Um, yeah. Well, just looking our, down here, uh, that's a, quite a gain that you've got. It uh, is. So when you take a look, it's, you know, now we're into some pretty... We're into some pretty heavy, bulky parts. Yeah. Um, and we're still learning to put this truck together. This is, uh, you know, we don't have the experience of building thousands of these yet. Um, so we're working at what's the best method to put it together. Yeah. And that's where you see, you know, we won't have this many people in process building a truck normally. Uh, you know, we're trying to focus on still developing the best methods. Right. A lot of it's technique, you know, yeah. the, these harnesses, of these uh, high voltage cables, they take a little, a little bit of work. Yeah. Yeah, what Tesla has done that I like is um, instead of having an iron box here that you wire tied to, they have molded um, componentry. So this shows up so these guys don't have to muscle it in place. They, um, they shown up with their own little fixture built right in, and then instead of having this heavy iron stuff, they'll put a couple of bolts in and it's done. Really, I don't know what all goes on top of this, but I can tell you right now that, you know, you're talking about weight reduction and whatnot. There's, this place is, um, I don't think you're gonna have a whole lot of trouble finding. No, there's, uh, a, there's a lot of low hanging fruit yeah, right now yeah. for things like weight reduction. Right. Again, we, you know, as we're putting it together, these guys are even coming up with ideas. Hey, we could do this. Well, that's we one could of the that. things I that think I, it'll change a lot over the yeah. next couple of years. Well, one of the things that uh, that like I've launched a few plants, and um, 
I was a big fan of Edward Deming, so uh, I knew him quite well. And he had um, he had us put up flip charts all over the place. And when somebody saw something, or I mean, it doesn't take much. Write it down, and, and you're and you're done. And I think that if you do it at the end of the day, or you know, you tell your foreman or something like that, it's better if you can get it done as fast as possible because people forget. And this way, even if you get it in two or three times, you get three little stars behind it. It means, hey, yeah. you know what? Everybody saw it. this is a problem. So, so we still have, again, you can see the whiteboard down there. We yeah. still have the version of the flip chart. Well, let me show you the uh, the new world flip the, chart. The electronic flip chart. So this guy's job right here is he's monitoring the build. Yeah. And when they have that issue, He's pulling up the issues, taking a picture, putting this in. We get a response from Lyndon's team same day yeah. if it's an engineering issue. So when then we review these twice a day, start of the morning and end of the day. But mm. that's that's Mark's job here. Mm -hmm. His so job is to track room? all of this. Yeah. Do you have an obeyer room then? So is that, uh... you take a look right there. We call it the modern version. That's the church, the just church? because of the way the lights is. Oh, but okay. That's, uh, that's what that setup is. It's no bay room. We meet there twice a day yeah. to go yeah. through those kinds of problems. It also gives us the tracking, which the flipboard charts don't give. Well, we we have you know we were doing um, so Monroe worked on the Ram, the uh, the minivan, the, uh, the Charger and Challenger, uh, the Jeep. That was we were running that for yeah. Chrysler, and those all turned out to be pretty good. I mean. Whoever would have thought that a that a pickup truck could become a luxury car or luxury vehicle Absolutely. of the year, um, and for that we used the wall process, the product and process integrated wall. You had it at General Motors very well, but we converted it, and so we had uh, we had the electronic wall. Yep. So um, that was what we you couldn't have it in a church like that because you had to have it semi dark. Yep. But apart from that, yeah, it come out really, really And good. I came out of Toyota, so we yeah. we did all the same stuff. Yeah. So the one thing that I really like about uh, this type of a line is having the ATVs, automatic guided vehicles. And um, actually the guys who who really did a good job initially was Volvo and then later on uh, General Motors with a truck plant. The problem was it drove the foreman and the general foreman crazy uh, because they had no idea what was going on. The, the, the truck knew where it was supposed to go, but they did not. That and, and I'm telling you, having it start off this way is much better for the psychology or the psyche of all the guys that are, uh, that are going to be building the product. Yep, and the hardest part with AGVs, unlike a conveyor, is the way a lot of people set them up is that the associates have to tell it to go, as opposed to telling it to stop. Um, and we've designed these, they have the ability now that they're planned yeah. to go when their time is up, and we actually have yeah. to, we have start and stop stations for each one that keeps pace for the truck. We don't have to worry so much about it right now because we're, you know, pretty slow tack time. Yeah. But when we're building 40,000 of these, that becomes much right. more important. So, and that's when you start looking at, um, uh, you don't have it now, but you put up a laser system to say what e every operator is supposed to do. It points at the socket, points at the rundown tool, points at the part, whatever. And then as each one of these things go in, once the AGV knows that it's ready to go, yep. because everything, then it can take off all by itself. So when we have that, the initial stages, so every operator's got an instruction screen. And yeah. that screen takes him, it's a dance cart. Yeah. And it's go here, put these right. four bolts in. And if you take a look at the yeah. torque guns that are hanging, the torque guns are all set up that if it knows it needs to drive four torques, if it drives three, it won't let it go. Yeah. If it drives, you know, tries to drive five, it won't let it go. If the torques are off, if the angle is off. Yeah. yeah. So we have all of that. And more, you know, as important is that we save all that data. 10 years from right. now, yeah. we still know what torque we drove what yeah. bolt to on this truck. Yeah, well, at, at Ford, I put in something called the aid system. Poor choice of names. <laughs> but, uh, but at the end of the day, 
Uh, that was in 1986, and Ford's got all the data on every bolt that was put down or yep. every head that was put in place was for an engine plant. That was the first one we tried it on, and every torque was uh, was monitored and calculated and went into an old-fashioned old-fashioned computer system. But it, 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 they've still got it. And I mean, you you know, we don't really need to do that at the volume we're building at. But well, we wanted to, to start with that process know. control, yeah. yeah. Because once you start with that, right. you'll stick with it no matter how fast yeah, we go. Exactly. Out. The last two stations, we're putting the wheels on, lifting it off the AGV. Yeah. Um, very last station, we power it up. So up until this point in time, there's never any power on the truck. The associates now are done with the truck. Yeah. From this point on, it's it's drivable. We run every truck through the inspection stations. The very last thing we do is take it out the door, and every truck we build is going to run on the it's going to run on the track. So you're building your own fuel cells here, then. So one of the things we do is <laughs> that our team here builds the prototypes for Linden and Christian. So, um, and I wanted to do that because you know that truck we're building right now is an alpha we won't see it online until mid 2023 yeah but by the time we see it again my technicians will have built 20 of them and they'll understand they'll have intimate knowledge of, yeah. of how that truck goes together so it, um, it's a much better way to do it yeah and it keeps us with an extra battalion of techs for you know when we need extra resources to help out with stuff. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Hopefully the boys explain Movember to you. Yeah. But, uh, Actually, I don't know if you heard, but uh, did you, Jason tell you what happened? Uh, he, he's uh, big on uh, the, um, he's big on the uh, uh, cancer drive. So they put me out for auction. Uh-huh. Lunch. And a, and a half day tour. Yeah, he he, uh, he raced more than the uh, Kentucky Bucks? Derby and the uh, yeah. World right. Series tickets. Over 10,000 yeah. Over 10,000 bucks. All right. Yeah. Thanks very much, Sandy. Now we're off yeah. to the next one in November and trying to raise some more right. money. Yeah. Oh, really? I don't know what I can auction you off for for Movember, but now you got me thinking. I don't know. What's Movember? I don't even know. So Movember men's is Men's Health men's Awareness. Health. Oh, Men's Health Awareness. Well, you so got to have women. Uh, so I told Jason that I'd uh, participate in uh, the breast cancer awareness, but he had to help me with Movember. So. Oh, there you go. So well, he knows how to get nice. money. That's for yeah. sure. Wow, cool.